I'm going to be showing you how you've been using the Windows taskbar wrong your entire life. Maybe. Probably. So let me get right into showing you how to fix it and to use it the right and correct way. Okay, the first thing you're going to do is simply right click on your taskbar and unlock it. Then click on your taskbar and drag it to the left side of your monitor. Or the right. Let go, right click it again, and lock the taskbar. That's it, you're done. It's so easy, right? If that's all you came here to figure out, then you may now carry on with your life knowing how to use the Windows taskbar correctly. But if you're the curious type and you want to find out why this is the correct way to use the Windows taskbar, I will explain that to you in this video. So let's go. Okay, so maybe the title of this video is a bit hyperbolic, but hear me out. Our monitors have changed quite a bit over time and the Windows taskbar has not really, and this is a problem. First, let's set the stage by taking a trip down memory lane, all the way back to 1985 with Windows 1.0. They didn't quite have the taskbar that we know and love or hate today. That would come later in Windows 95 but they did have some semblance of a taskbar that was placed on the bottom row. Monitors back then were much more square than they are today, generally with an aspect ratio of 4 to 3. TVs were also in this rather square format, as you might know from watching some killer 80s movies wondering, why are these black bars on either side of the movie? Fun fact, the 4 to 3 motion picture aspect ratio, also known as 133 to 1, was created about 120 years ago by William Kennedy Dixon. This Thomas Edison employee was also developing a forerunner to the movie projector and decided that an image height of 4 perforations on 35mm film gave the ideal shape. In 1909, the ratio was declared the official standard for all U.S. films by the Motion Picture Patent Company. Now, I don't want to dive too far off into the weeds, but then that begs the question of why was 35mm even selected for film if we're basing four perforations of that film to create the video aspect ratio. But I'll save some of these deeper rabbit holes maybe later for another time. Anyway, here is a timeline of Windows releases with their taskbar front and center, well, front and bottom. Do you see a trend regarding the taskbar? Yeah, it's always on the bottom. Quite a lot of things have changed to Windows in 35 plus years, a lot of updates and quality of life improvements, yet no one seems to have paid much attention to the taskbar. This is a curious thing to me. So let me present my case. Orientation as innovation. Now, isn't this annoying? Well, perhaps not because you're a Zoomer TikToker and don't even know what a desktop computer is. But for those that can remember, when you're viewing a video and someone uploads it in portrait mode or vertical, it just totally ruins the experience and there is a reason for that. Perhaps if we evolved with one central eye, like a cyclops, it would make more sense to have a more squared viewport for visual computer interfaces. But to me, it makes sense for us to naturally evolve and progress towards a more horizontal viewport. Not only do we have a pair of eyes set in a horizontal fashion, but each eye themselves have evolved to favor horizontal peripheral vision as opposed to verticality. I do think it's a bit strange that our technological innovations have originated in this more squared format, but as I said earlier, that had more to do with adaptations from film, but then that makes me wonder why film started its journey in a more squared off fashion. Also, what about books? Sure, when you open the pages they conform to a horizontal format, but we certainly don't read them that way, as we bisect that horizon into two vertical planes and read them individually instead of straight across. This is also how our letter paper format is arranged. Is there something about text that lends itself a better candidate to a more portrait mode of consumption? Another curiosity is in antiquity, famous paintings or portraits are generally portrayed in portrait mode. Go figure. As opposed to paintings of scenery, which is typically often in landscape mode, which makes sense, is that because scenery tends to be captured more horizontally, while humans walking upright tend to show more of themselves in portrait? 
seems to me that the format is adaptive to the content, which is kind of my point. Our viewports keep getting more horizontal, but our content tends to remain vertical. Are you starting to get the picture? Pun intended. Can you see where I'm going with this? The question I am posing is why are our taskbars and most UI navigation in general still on the bottom of our viewports when we have this extra real estate on the sides? There was a time before when aspect ratios were by majority, if not all, 4 to 3 format. This is a much more squared viewport to where if you put the taskbars on the sides or the bottom, there wasn't a huge impact of eating up your pixels. With our monitors increasingly becoming wider, or at the very least widescreen being the norm now, 1920 by 1080 is still the most popular and widely used format, and this results in a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. I could see why in the beginning, Microsoft wanting to showcase their taskbar front and center as a means of navigating around Windows. And this may very well be the reason why it's still there today. Paired with not wanting to upset their users by moving things around too much, we are creatures of habit and reluctant to change, even if that change now objectively makes more sense. Being the nerd that I am, I've definitely played around with most of the settings in Windows, adding custom themes. Do you guys remember Stardock? They're still around. And messing with the taskbar is something I have done before, but all of those changes were short-lived and ultimately ended with me reverting back to what felt familiar. Like any self-respecting computer doofus, I was constantly playing around with Linux and desperately hoping for the day that I could abandon Windows entirely and solely use Linux for all of my computing needs. If your desktop didn't have wobbly Windows, could you even consider yourself cool? I dreamed of the day I could utilize all of the amazing 3D effects Compass Fusion allotted. 3D cubes with multiple desktops, crazy window exploding animations, the future of operating system interfaces were looking amazing. It wasn't until I was trying out one of the latest Ubuntu releases, Ubuntu 11.04 Natty Narwhal, way back in 2011, and in GNOME, they put their taskbar on the left side for the first time, which was just so weird and foreign to me. At first, I didn't like it at all, but later, after thinking about it a while, I realized why they did this. Why would you take up precious vertical pixels with the taskbar when you could just move it to the side where the real estate is more abundant? Although it still wasn't a perfect solution because GNOME still has the top menu bar, much like a Mac, so why have two taskbars? I messed around with Ubuntu some more and ultimately was just fine using the taskbar on the side, it just took a little while to get used to. I couldn't ever leave Windows entirely for a number of reasons and it's still my daily driver but that's a whole other topic in itself. Seriously, if Linux is so great, how come I can't run Adobe apps fine in 2021? And don't give me that just use wine argument because it's not the same. Plus, I'm not a big drinker. So I thought, what if I try vertical taskbars on Windows? I run an ultra wide monitor from my main monitor, so I would have even more side real estate with its 21 to nine aspect ratio. I originally was trying it out on the left side because the start menu is also on the left, but that now moves the clock to the left side and I am so used to viewing the clock on the bottom right of my screen. I tried this many times but always reverted back to the bottom location because it just seemed too weird. Oddly enough because of the clock more than anything else. I did keep at it though and it wasn't until I finally swapped my taskbar to the right side that I was able to be very comfortable with it. This retains the clock in its original position, so no weirdness there either. And also, because I'm right-handed, it's just more intuitive to have it on the right. It just feels correct. I think regardless, if you put it on the left or the right, it is an improvement over the bottom. Or the top, for that matter. Are there any of you freaks out there using it on the top? May Jesus have mercy on your souls. So I offer you up a challenge to try this new vertical taskbar position for a week and see if you can do it. You'll find you'll have more vertical space for web pages, documents, and other stuff. But I have also started questioning, do we even need a taskbar? Since learning how to alt tab, the taskbar isn't nearly as useful anymore. In fact, the only thing I really use it for is the clock. I have been recently experimenting with the auto hide function, but who wants to see that animating all the time? They do make some apps with a registry hack that will permanently hide the taskbar, but I suppose there are some times when you really need the taskbar. 
In the meantime, I will just be auto hiding it and looking for a better solution for a clock. Also, what is up with this with the taskbar? I've noticed this since Windows XP and it might even go back further. But if you try and slim it down, you can keep clicking and dragging it smaller and smaller. To me, this just seems like a bug. This should not exist, but it has existed for decades now. If anyone knows why this is a thing when you make smaller icons and then keep clicking and dragging it to be slimmer and slimmer on why that is possible, let me know in the comments. Even though this video is probably already way too long, there's last but not least browsers. Or more, why is our internet content still primarily oriented vertically? Most websites still look like heck on a widescreen monitor, and where are the vertical tab browsers? That's already so much wasted space, and instead, we chew up even more of our vertical pixels with more browser Chrome and tabs? Okay, so Chrome does have an extension for this, but it's not that great from the reviews. How is this not integrated into Chrome natively already though? But kudos to Edge Browser for having vertical tabs already built in. Although it's not perfect because you're not gaining any of those top pixels back by having vertical tabs. Is this because the desktop computer is dying? Is everything moving more and more to the phone that developers don't really care what their desktop websites look like? Are we going to go completely full circle now to where horizontal taskbars are actually making more sense and better again because all of our viewports and content is now made to fit a phone's aspect ratio? Anyway, you get the idea. I'm carrying the torch for a new revolution of changing the perspective on this ubiquitous UI element. And at the very last minute, I did hear some rumors that you could not change the orientation of the taskbar on Windows 11. And I can confirm, at least in this state, in the very beginnings of Windows 11, you cannot do it. They may add back this feature later on, but I am not holding my breath. But of course, I had to find a workaround. Right now, I feel like it's an underground fight club where the only people in the know set their taskbars up this way and anytime I see one out in the wild, I just think to myself, this person Please. gets it. Thank you guys so much for watching the video all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think of this. Is this totally stupid? Is it ridiculous to think this hard about something that most people don't care about? Don't even use it anymore. They're just on their phones. Still has a taskbar, by the way. Of course, the truly best taskbar setup is the one that you're most productive and comfortable with. I'm just encouraging you to experiment and find out what that actually is. If this video had you even try out vertical taskbars for a week, let me know in the comments because I'm super curious. I'm coming at you with a brand new e-bike project that is not like many others. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.